<clears throat> I drill a small hole. Once I get the backs finished, I'll drill a small hole through. And I put a, an aluminum split ring Now uh, let's do it here, maybe. <clears throat> There's the split ring. I use two pairs of pliers. And I don't pry it open. I twist it open. So that when I twist it back, it'll work. Once you get it twisted open, I'm going to slide it through the hole like that. I, from Amazon, I buy silk cord necklaces. They're about $14 for 50 of them. We close the ring by twisting it back together. And there's a new Starry Night pendant. Well, let me see if I can get it in front of you. There we go. Just like that. Any further questions? Again, I did this so that I would have the skills to be able to make the Morocco blue bowls. And sometimes. Sometimes I get tired of making a Morocco blue bowl and I make a, this one's green and it's a, it's a little candy dish. I have a question. Yeah. The center spiral that you used on at least the first piece, you're using that short handle um, I'm using the small Robert Sori tool. Is it beveled on both sides? Or just no, it's beveled only on one side. And what's the difference between that or the one beveled on both sides? The one that's beveled on both sides gives me all these little dots. Um, see all the little dots in here? Right. Same thing with, the, with this one. You can see all the little dots. That's called orange peel. And that's what that double rip, double beveled tool is going to be able to give you. Okay. I tried turning it to the side and, and spinning it. It doesn't work. You just get a mess. Hold it straight up and down, put it in, and just let it slide back and forth side to side, and you get that nice orange peel effect. It's also very good when you're on an angle you can see well, let me get this camera for the camera too okay big spiral with a large spiraling tool there small spiraling tool in the middle this right here this pattern right here that's that orange peel that i was talking about and it's really good to get at an ang when you're going at an angle like this inside the bowl. Same thing on the outside when you're at your, your steep angle right here. That's that orange peel that works real well. Some of the other tools on when you're getting this kind of an angle or this kind of a bend on your bowl, they don't work real well. So, but that orange peel does. What's the brand of that? The embellishing wax is Hampshire Sheen embellishing wax. Uh, you can get this at either Woodworld in Dallas or from Jeff Hornig at the Walnut Log in St. Louis. And Jeff has got the U.S. Dist distribution rights from Hampshire Sheen. And he sells the, the Hampshire Sheen, all of their line of products, uh, as well as Woodworld. They do too.
Would you mind holding an airbrush? Yep. So I could read that name. Copic. C O P I C. Copic. Thanks. Okay. Check your chat box. <laughs> and I've got this is my box of colors. Now I've got a dozen or about 20 maybe different colors of markers. This particular box that I'm holding with all the little holes in it. I bought it at Hobby Lobby. Um, they were getting ready to throw it away, so I picked it up for a couple of bucks. It has two nice plastic posts here and here, and they lost the plastic posts for the other side. And I said, I don't care. I'm a wood turner. I can, I can fix up some posts. So I put a couple of wooden posts in there. And it works fine for me. You said those were refillable? Yes, those Coptic markers are refillable. Are they waterborne? Um, I think so. It doesn't really say. What do you have to use to clean up your shop from the overspray? Uh, denatured alcohol is what I use. And it, it cleans it up real quick. Yes. Hi, this is Rebecca. How are you? Good. How are you, Rebecca? I'm doing very well. Um, I don't know if I missed it, but I I don't know if you said anything about cleaning up the back of the pendants. Yeah, when I parted it off, I I used uh, this tool to clean up the back, smooth it off, and then I sand it. I usually take it off the lathe and just lay it on a paper towel to, to spray paint it. Oh, okay. Thank you for yep. the Yeah, I cut a few little circles on the back. Uh, what did I do with it? I don't even see it. It's here somewhere. Here it is. I just cleaned it up with some circle. Double, double stick tape? Yeah, that's just double stick tape. Mm -hmm. I do have a jig for my airbrush or my vacuum system that I use. Um, this is goes on to my headstock. I've got a two inch fitting with another fitting that I've got the foam tape on. And then this will go in here. And let me show you what that looks like without that foam tape. Because I tried all kinds of different jigs to do that. And this is the one that I found that works best. And then after I get it to this point, I've got this one in here. It's glued in. So now it's ready to turn. And I will turn a taper in here. So this is going to come down. These It'll come down at least to where these small legs are and then I put the, the uh, foam tape over that so the only thing is in there is just this hole that sucks the uh, pendant in and it works real well okay so I played a, played a lot with that trying to figure out a good re way to to do the the backs of the pendants but the double stick tape seems to work real well. But the thing is, it is with double stick tape, I use spec tape. So I get it at Wood World or Woodcraft, I'm sorry. And uh, once you put it on, put a little bit of pressure on while you put it on the lathe, put a little bit of pressure on it and let it sit for about 10 minutes before you try and turn it. Don't get in a hurry. Otherwise, it'll come off on you. Is your parting tool. Parting tool that I use right now. It's a Carter. Carter. Carter and Sons parting tool. 
I like it. It does a real good job. Um, I've got a woodpecker's carbide parting tool on order. And they say you don't get any tear out at all when you use it. So I've got it on order. I haven't got it yet. I want to try it out and see if, see if it might work a little better. We'll wait and see. So is that would cut a wider curve. It, it does cut a little bit wider than the Carter and Son, yes. Right. Yep. But I'm using scrap wood anyway. I mean, I paid 10 bucks for 10 feet of it. So, what's an eighth of an inch? Okay, that's what I got, guys.